Hello you amazing hackers, how are you all doing today? I hope you're doing well. So I was having a bit of a discussion with a subscriber of mine uh, over on the Slack channel, which by the way you guys can join in the description below. Uh, we were talking about cross-site scripting uh, and the subscriber found a cross-site scripting bug and we were talking about how do you fuzz for cross-site scripting. So of course I gave my fuzzing strings, but I was also thinking Maybe uh, cross-site scripting polyglots are also a good idea to tell him about and maybe tell you guys about because it's an interesting topic to me. Um, so let's start by telling you guys what exactly a polyglot is. Um, a polyglot is uh, an XSS attack factor that can be executed in various contexts when you enter it in its raw form. So when you enter this polyglot, for example, I have one on the screen right now, but there are more, of course. So uh, this specific polyglot, it contains various techniques to evade specific filters. As you can see, um, some characters are typed in lowercase, some characters in uppercase. We have some special characters in here. Uh, we have some replacements in here. Uh, and when you enter these polyglots, there's going to be a good chance uh, that you find a cross-site scripting attack factor when there is one possible. Now, I personally have never had much success with these polyglots, but I don't specifically look for cross-site scripting strongly, so I don't really use them a lot. I have my own strings that I use. I mostly look for blind cross-site scripting, uh, which is when you enter a cross-site scripting attack factor in one application and it gets opened by a different user in another application that you yourself cannot control. So that's mostly what I look for when I look for blind cross site scripting. And of course, I'll also just enter some random data. Now, uh, here you can see Andy. Andy, I'm making this video specifically for you, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, anyway, uh, this was my video about polyglots. So you just take this attack factor, you include it in every uh, input field that you see, and chances are, and of course not 100%, uh, but you're going to have bigger chances that you're going to be able to evade a filter. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you liked, please remember to leave a like. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, I hope I'll see you in the next video. And please remember to subscribe because when we reach 1,500 subscribers, we're going to do a giveaway for you guys. So I hope I'll see you later. Bye.